Oh, my, let me see your eyes. Let me see your eyes. Not bad. Oh. You hurting? I look better than I feel. How about that? You hurting? <clears throat> a little bit, man. A little bit. We celebrated last night. Nothing crazy, you know. Um, but I'm feeling the World Series this morning. I wish I was at a Waffle House. Tweeted that out this morning. I saw that. I that saw that. Some waffles and some bacon sound pretty good right now. Dude, I wish I had stock in Waffle House because those places are going to be packed for the next, like, three or four days in Atlanta nonstop. Good luck getting a table there. Oh, man. I mean, look, I, I can't imagine how Braves fans are feeling. They must be going nuts last night. I, I guess. I guess. And with that, I want to officially welcome everybody to the Wednesday playoff edition of Baseball Today, presented to you by friends at Dugout Mugs. In just a couple of minutes, Braves fans, we're going to tell you how you can get your hands on some brand new Braves World Championship merchandise, courtesy of Dugout Mugs. So don't go anywhere for that. Um, I, I saw the champagne. How's the John Boy jersey? What, what do you got there? <laughs> it's a cup from the Red Wings. It got my name on it. Oh, yeah. What do you, what, what do you have in it at 8 a.m. local time? <laughs> this water, man. I'm trying Damn. to get all right, we're going to cover uh, how to cover your prediction properly toward the end of this show. But let's start it off with the champs, because they really deserve the most love. As impressive as your feat was to tweet it out on March 31st that the Braves are going to beat the Astros in six games, and that is awesome. It's still very impressive what the Atlanta Braves did. With all the injuries, with losing a top five player in the game, with having their best young pitchers not available to them at all this year, to do it with a mixed bag of veterans and youngsters and guys they acquired at the trade deadline that we didn't know were going to help out necessarily, very impressive. What was the most impressive part of Atlanta's championship run? That's a tough question, dude. Uh, Jorge Soler was awesome coming back, missing all those games with the, on the COVID IL, coming back and the force was impressive. Uh, Max Reed getting out of that first inning and getting fired up and giving them length in this game was impressive. The bullpen's been impressive. Matzik was incredible all postseason long. Will Smith had, had a clean, a perfect record in the postseason. Uh -huh. um, at the, their nine-hole hitter. Dansby Swanson coming up and just putting the blast into one to put the game away. I mean, the Braves team kind of had it all firing. That's why I tell everyone every single year, the goal – I mean, I get it. The goal is to win the World Series. But the – you just got to make it to the playoffs. That's it. Like, get to the playoffs and things happen. Like, the team that's hot wins. The Braves were hot in all facets. Their defense was incredible last night. Their offense was incredible. Their pitching was incredible. Those are the teams that win. Go back and just look at teams who have a World Series title. They got hot at the right time. Braves did that. I mean, tip the cap, right? Well, for me, it was at the end of July. And I want to credit the entire organization. I want to credit the players. I want to credit Alex Anthopoulos. Because, what, were they five or six games back of the Mets when they made those deals? They hadn't even gotten to 500 all year. For him to be willing to pull the trigger at a time when so many executives are like, no, oh, it's not going to happen for us this year. He had the philosophy you just had. He said, listen, the only reason we're actually in this thing, sub 500, is because our division sucks. He actually came out a few weeks ago and he said the only reason we were able to do this was because the NL East was a struggle bunny. It was a struggle fest. And so he did it. It's one thing to pull off the trades. It's amazing that he got the stars to align where all of those guys contributed. Now, if you remember, the biggest name, maybe not the biggest name, but in my opinion, the most important piece they picked up at that deadline was Richard Rodriguez from the Pirates. You remember that? He was a reliever who I thought was going to add something to that bullpen. And I was like, okay, the other guys are cute little bit parts. That's something where if you build up enough strength in your bullpen, you could put a nice run together. He didn't contribute at all. He was giving up homers left and right. So what about the other guys? Jock had some critical home runs earlier in their playoff run. Eddie Rosario, NLCS MVP. Jorge Soler, who, oh, by the way, had a sub-700 OPS and a sub-200 batting average when they traded for him, did his thing. And Adam Duvall, a couple of blasts in the World Series, including a grand slam. So not only to trade for these guys, but to have them play as instrumental a role as they did was unreal. Yeah, and you see it, you know, a lot of times you, you mentioned Jorge struggling with the Royals. Um, 
Eddie wasn't doing much with Cleveland. Uh, Duvall was, was – He was ha- hurt when they traded for him. Yeah, Duvall was – you know, he was having a good year. But mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's about someone wanting you and feeling wanted and coming over into an atmosphere where, like, we're trying to win. I mean, that, that gets you not more focused, but, you know, it's that extra little oomph to, for your pre- preparation. And it, it, you're right, man. It was so incredible what these guys have done. Like, they, they brought – those guys, those acquisitions – were the reason that they won the World Series, or even got, I guess, got to the World Series. How about that? A lot of contributions to win the World Series, but they're the reason they got there. So I, I did a little digging. Uh, I wanted to go back and see what some of the response was in kind of the, the written word when the Braves made all these deals. And Jeff Schultz, I'm not calling him out here. I went back, I, I thought he wrote an excellent piece when the Braves made all these trades at the end of July. He, his last few lines of this trade piece were, the Braves have two goals now. It's passing the Mets and ex- uh, expecting a playoff berth would lead to a deep run. The first one is possible. The second one is unlikely. Proceed with caution. And I think that's how most of us all felt. It was like, they made these moves. They're cute. They're going to give it the old try. Heck, they might even win this division, but they're going to get pummeled. I said they were going to lose to the Brewers in the first round. I said they were going to get destroyed by the Dodgers in round two. And I thought the Astros were going to beat them. So you're welcome, Braves fans. You're welcome. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they just they just got hot. There's a lot of those out there, not just Jeff or whatever you just said. There's a lot of those tweets out there. I mean, Brett Absolutely. Anderson, for saying that I was rooting for the Braves, he said they're gonna get they're gonna get killed by the team that that wins the uh, Dodgers and Giants. Mm-hmm. That is, and so there's a lot of bad takes out there. But I mean. You really just have to be so happy for Atlanta fans. Like, what they went through this season. <laughs> now yes. we're like, ah, let's go. Yep, yep. All right, Max Freed obviously crushed it in game six with his uh, six shutout innings. Simply amazing. No walks as well. Was his development into an ace like the last two and a half months the critical component in them getting to where they went last night? Probably because, again, along with those outfielders like that, a run like that helped them finish first in the, in the NL East. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, to go out and we talked about his start, the first start in the World Series, and it didn't go well statistically wise, but like they weren't hitting the ball hard against him. Then he came out and did his thing uh, last night, but he wasn't there until he got stepped on, man. Like he, that brought him to that mental space he needed to get to. Uh, we talk about it all the time with Max. He's such a nice guy. And, like, he doesn't need to be fiery to be successful. But in that game last night, I think once that happened, it just, like, locked him in. So, yeah, he was a huge part. And that's who he is, though. First, the pedigree is there for Max. First rounder, he was good in the minor leagues. He's had some success at the, at the big level. Now he's, you know, like you just said, he's a bona fide ace. Well, it was interesting. I, I, once again, I did a little digging. When he got traded – uh, after the 2014 season in the Justin Upton trade. A couple of years later, I went back and looked and said, just wanted to figure out what they, they were saying about it. Uh, so he went over from San Diego with Jace Peterson, who didn't do much, Malik Smith, outfielder, great personality guy, but, you know, has really bounced around a lot. And then they said, Freed, you know, he's had Tommy John. He came up. He hasn't been that successful. It really was a trade that the Braves lost. And it's a warning shot for everybody out there. When your team's making trades and you're getting prospects you don't know anything about, you got to wait a while. You have to wait a while. Now you tell me who won that trade. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, I'll wait. You're going, wait. For, you're going for the neck today, man, calling people out. I love it. Hey, I come with receipts. That's okay. I come with receipts. Hey, and by the way, you can dig into my Twitter. I've said plenty of shit that would be on uh, you know, freezing cold takes. I get it. This is, when, you, when you're in the prediction business, it's true, but you always have to put a caveat out there and say Max Reed still has tremendous potential. At the time they wrote the article, he was probably 22 or 23 years old. I don't know anybody in the world that's a finished product at 22 or 23. What he did, though, over the last two years in terms of his development, because for a long time I was like, okay, I see Flaherty doing his thing. I see Giolito becoming an all-star. I wonder if Max Freed is ever going to get to that level. And guess what? Those two dudes left you behind flew to Houston, and watched their boy do their thing. They so. did. 
talking to him last night about it. They're fired up, man. Yeah. You're totally right, especially, especially nowadays. Player development is a real thing, and sometimes guys are late bloomers, or you know, sometimes they figure stuff out. You can't just write people off all the time. Right. You know, if they yeah. struggle for a year, everyone says, "Oh, they stink." Well, you know what? What if they go and get better? Like guys don't guys don't stop getting better, even in the big leagues. In pro ball, that's what it's all about. Everybody's good when you enter pro ball. It's about can can you go from here to here? How do you get there? Because this this is what it takes. Everybody's here in pro ball. You mm-hmm. got to find it to you know, work on your craft and, and figure something out. And, you know, a lot of times we give up on people too early. Max, apparently someone gave up on him. I never would give on someone like Max. You just look at his body and how projectable he is. It's hard to give up on someone like that. Right. Uh, that right last night. Yeah. And by the way, you know, me coming with receipts, Nate Brady Steele in the chat says, kind of like when Rose said the Giants would be sellers. I told you that throughout this show all season long, how much of a moron I was. I owned up to it. Nate, I come with my own receipts, too. Yeah, I'm a dummy. That's right. <laughs> uh, real quickly, you were Braves fans in the house, we have new merchandise at Dugout Mugs about the br- brand-new champions, the Atlanta Braves. They're going out and doing their thing. So go to dugoutmugs.com. You're going to get 30% off of everything. It's better than any Black Friday deal. Order it now. Go get your championship gear. You can go get your stuff that's engraved on these great dugout mugs. You've got the old wind-up if you're more of a wine connoisseur. They've got the bottle openers. They've even got the knob shots, Ploofy. Knob shots. Thank you. 30% off if you use the code word John Boy. 30% off if you use the code word John Boy at dugoutmugs.com. So, if you have a Braves fan in your family or no one that's a good friend, go order this stuff up now because you don't want to be left out in the cold for the holiday season. Hanukkah is fast approaching after Thanksgiving. We all know Christmas is December 25th. Get in on the action now so that when it arrives to your house, you're like, oh, I can wrap it and give it to the person I love and get 30% off. Let's go. Code word John Boy, dugoutmugs.com. Yeah. Let's go. I love Hanukkah. Gosh. That's right. All right. Give me 10 seconds to make sure that my teenage son is up so he goes to school. All right. I got 10 seconds all by myself here. I'm hurting, guys. Don't tell Chris. I'm trying to be professional right now, but I am hurt McGirt. You got less than a half hour. Chris yelling. Get up. Jeez, oh, man. Went back to sleep. It's his, it's his late day. Holy smokes. Get me fired I, up at this time of day. I wish I could go back to sleep. I'm tired, man. You'll be able to. You'll be able to take a nice nap today. Olivia will, after your amazing prognostication job, you get to take a day off. All right. So, tough question here. Are you happier for the combo of Freddie Freeman and Brian Snitker, a pair of lifelong Atlanta Braves, or more sad for Dusty that he did not get that elusive ring as a manager? I honestly haven't even thought about Dusty yet. And, yeah, I feel really sad for Dusty. But, you know, you got to give it to Snicker and Freeman. I- I'm going to just talk on a player standpoint for Freddie to go out like that. And I know he's probably going to be back in Atlanta, but that's another bargaining chip for him, by the way. But to oh, give yeah. it first championship in, in how long? 25 years? Six. 26 years? What a feeling. You know, he. when you think about the Braves right now, you think about Freddie Freeman. That's just the bottom line. Like, he is the face of the franchise, him and Acuna. Um, and, you know, there's some other good players there, but that's the guy. He's been with them his entire career. So you just – it's like a storybook ending. But they're not done yet, if that makes uh-huh. any sense. So I feel really good for Snicker, too. But just speaking on a, uh, on a player level, I mean, Freddie – the world is your oyster, baby. God. I hope he takes some time and gets wined and dined by other teams and then goes and signs with the Braves. That's what I hope. Yeah, it is kind of a weird off season. I mean, we're heading toward a December 1st possible lockout, and so that is going to change things in terms of how players are pursued, how much leverage you can have. It wouldn't surprise me if over the next 10 days the Braves go to Freddie Freeman, go knock on his door and say, let's get this thing done. What's it going to take? And, you know, Freddie Freeman signed that contract, that eight-year contract, and got paid handsomely over $100 million. 
but well below what he delivered. You know, it was like, in my opinion, like Max Scherzer. Like, the Nationals got every ounce out of Max Scherzer possible. The Braves did that and then some. And it's going to be the same deal with the Ronald Acuna deal. So at some point, you got to pay the piper. And this is the time I, w- I am extremely happy for him. I'm all about player movement and being able to maximize your earning potentials. Uh, Brian Snitker, a wonderful job. If you had told me five years ago that Brian Snitker would be the guy to lead the Braves to the promised land, I would have been like, uh-huh. excuse me? Be like, what? And the guy just bided his time. Like, he bounced up and down as a major league coach and back to the minors and all this sort of stuff. A lot of guys, when that happens, Bluef, you know this from the business, when that sort of thing happens, you split, man. If you don't see a paved way to what your ultimate goal is, as a, we think about players being blocked by certain guys. When managers or aspiring managers are out, they think that sometimes I got to go. Especially with the way the game was trending, like young managers, people with zero experience, Snickers sitting there like, hey, man, like I got all the experience you this behind me. Yeah. Snickers like, hey, I got all the experience in the world. Like, you know, someone pick me. Let me get it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited. I'm happy for him that he stuck it out and got his shot. Because you're right. If you don't see a pen, get out of there. And maybe he tried to and it didn't happen. And all this is – Happened for a reason, you know. He's got to be stoked that he didn't leave now, obviously. But yeah, like that. Those baseball lifers, man. Every organization has them, uh, and for him to like get this and, and win the championship is just like so special. And I am really, really, um, I'm proud of Dusty Baker with what he's done with this organization. It was not an easy job for somebody to come in and try and pick up the pieces after they got blasted publicly um, and they lost their GM. They lost their top-notch manager, and they needed a guy to be able to handle that. And Dusty Baker's done a phenomenal job. And we heard that, you know, the Astros are interested in bringing him back on a one- or two-year deal. And when you're in your 70s, those are the type of deals you're going to end up getting. Um, I do feel for him because I know how much he wants it. He He got his ring as a player with the Dodgers. But for him to go through and travel from coast to coast and win divisions with five different teams and all that sort of stuff and did not have that on his resume, I know bothers him and hurts him a little bit. And so I am a little sad for him. Yeah, I'm not that sad for Dusty. I think he's living a good life. He I know is. That, I, I know there's he, a difference. There, there's a difference between – look, everything is uh, relative in when we're talking. Like when we say we feel bad for somebody – Yes, usually a player's earning millions of dollars while we feel bad for them. But that doesn't mean that the emotions are any less. Like, he's worked his entire life to be at the top of his game. That's all. And he was close. And he was close. You know what, Dusty? He really got put in a very difficult situation, like you said, with the Astros. And honestly, he like, kind of like made them likable. Dusty, just him alone. Like, made them likable. Imagine if they had some, like, asshole manager. Totally. They'd, they'd, like, you'd be like, oh, I don't even want to watch this game. But with Dusty at the helm, you're like, okay. Like, I see what he's doing. You talk you, – when you hear him after games talking about, you know, his team and his squad, like, he just had, like, the perfect temperament for that environment. He's the only – like, honestly, he's, like, the main reason I feel like people are starting to come around uh, on the Astros again. So, Dusty yeah. did that. Well, it's interesting because some people in the chat, like Norm says, Dusty has money even if he doesn't get re-signed. He's set for five lifetimes. Maybe. And that's possibly all accurate. That doesn't mean you stop trying at something. What's that? It doesn't mean that you stop trying at, like, your profession. Right. Or it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to be upset. Like, people could say, well, he's, he's had a great run. He's worked in Major League Baseball his entire adult life as a player and as a manager. Well, but that's okay. You're still allowed to be upset. Just because you have a great life doesn't mean that you are supposed to just turn off your emotional faucet. Yeah. That's all I'm saying here. So let's move on. Houston Astros. Great run for them. Stops a little shy. They're going to have a different look moving forward. I'm going to change the question a little bit on the fly. Do you think that the Astros have changed the public perception of their squad at all? What, what, what was your feeling throughout this World Series? 
in a ba- in the baseball world, yes, they've changed their perception. In the r- general public, in my experience, they haven't because people don't really, still don't really know what happened. They only have the headlines. Every uh-huh. person that isn't really in baseball, <clears throat> they're like, oh, aren't, they're still cheating, aren't they? And it's like, no, man. Like, they did something bad. They got caught. We got mad at them. But, like, for the last couple of years, like, this team has just played baseball, and they're so freaking good at it. Like, I think that's what we need to realize is that this Astros group, who, you know, isn't together fully anymore, and maybe if Carlos Correa leaves, it's, it's, we're talking about a different thing here, but them playing baseball was – or them together playing baseball was exceptional. Like, they are one of the best groups to ever do it in the history of the game. Five ALCSs in a row, three World Series appearances. I know they only won one, and it was in, the, in 2017, the bad year. But it was a pleasure watching these guys. And I think that's why players got so mad that this was happening was I played against them. All these guys that played against the Astros, you just you know the, the kind of talent they have on that field, and they didn't need to do that. I think that's when people get really upset. So for in the baseball world, I think they have changed uh, the perception just because they've continued to be good year in and year out. But in the general public, people still just think about them as cheaters, man. That's it. So I don't know what I don't know if that's ever going to go away because people are kind of just not misinformed, but like not fully informed on what's. Mm-hmm. Going. Yeah, I'm I'm split on that. I think it's really fifty fifty, uh, even in the baseball fan world. You know, even in our chats, the you know you mentioned the word Astros, and all we do is get trash can emojis thrown up there. Um, and I understand it. I get it. You know, we talk about we've talked about it several times. I've talked about it with a lot of the players I've had on the Rose rotation. Some are still pissed off. I asked Todd Frazier, um, you know, he said I had a chance to go sign with the Astros and I would have done it because of Dusty. And I said, well, hold on. You know, you've been very vocal about the whole deal with the Astros. I said, would you have had to come for, you know, with some sort of reconciliation? He goes, man, I don't know how I would have handled that. I'm still pissed off about it. And then I have other guys like Chris Bassett who came out and still pitches against the Astros. He's like, Dude, people got to move on. He's like, just move on. So you get a split deal across the board as far as players, I still think. And so I think the baseball public is still – I know I'm personally wrestling with it. Like, I don't know if I root for the Astros or root against them. I don't know. And I think it's something that is still going to take me a few years. Yeah. I don't necessarily root for or against them, but I enjoy watching them play baseball. How about that? Right. Good. Yep, I think that's fair. Altuve is a generational kind of like talent, dude. Like, and so is Correa, by the way. I know these guys are incredible to watch. Bregman's kind of fallen off a little bit, but mm-hmm. I, I, the way I feel is, I'm like, okay, I get what happened. I still enjoy watching you play, and you have always have to add the caveat: they weren't the only team. They were the team that got caught. Yep, that's what Bassett said. That's what Bassett said. Finally, how the heck do we celebrate your amazing prediction? I don't want any more pats on the back. I'm sick of people telling me I'm good at stuff. I just – all I want people to do is go to Tyler – Google Tyler Skaggs Foundation and go Google – or go donate a little bit to that. That's all I ask. That's – I don't want people telling me great job anymore. No more pats on the back. Just go please Google Tyler Skaggs Foundation and donate to that, please. That's all I want. I love that. I love that. I think we should all do that. Uh, we'll put that um, on our YouTube page as well so that you can just hit the link. Uh, that's really important stuff. Please. You do like, deserve it. I want people uh, to like yell at me again and tell me I'm shitty and like, I like that. I'm better. When well, you'll that- get, don't worry. You'll get plenty of that. You do this stuff long enough. You'll get plenty of that. Um, I do think that in the John Boy Media offices, we should redo one of the walls where we just put up your tweet. I like that. That way, when we walk into the office, when we're there, there's the. T- I I wouldn't be against it. I don't know what's going to happen today. What we're doing, I know we we have some stuff in the works, but man, just go just go do what I said. Ty Skaggs Foundation, do that. By the way, I heard you wanted to be on Eisen Show. You want me to get you on that? I said that's the only place I'd go because I like him. I don't want people calling me trying to get me on their show now. If you didn't mess with us back in the day, you don't get me now. Okay. All right. Well, we'll I see. Like a lot. Okay. Unless, I'll see what I can work on. I didn't like you. Um, 
Well, Ashlyn, are you in here? Where's Ashlyn? I, I, she was on here, and now I think she's disappeared. If so, send a request to get in here because I want to. I want to see how she's doing today. I would love to see that too. <laughs> we I talk, know. I'm talking baseball. She was pretty fired up. There she is. Yeah. Braves, Ashlyn, get in here. There she is. Okay, let's get her in here. I just sent the accept. And let's see how she's doing. It'd be great. It's so pro if she joined us from a Waffle House. There she is. Hello, Ashlyn from Mansplain Baseball Elsewhere, one of the great podcasts on John Boy Media. Congratulations. Hi, thank you. Um, today's a great day. Uh, oh, guys, I can't believe they did it. <laughs> Come I on, really Ashley. still can't did believe Did you sleep at all last night? I did. David woke up at about 1.30 and walked back in the living room, and he was like, what are you doing? Because I was just sitting in the recliner watching the second run of the post-game show. He was like, go to bed. I was like, I, I, how am I supposed to go to bed right now? I spent $400 in like 30 minutes on – um. World Series crap. Um, so that was fun. But what'd you buy? What kind of gear did you get? Dude, I bought everything. I bought. I, I kind of blacked out a little bit because I bought like every drinkware item there was. I'm not sure why. I bought koozies for tw twelve ounce cans, but also twelve ounce slim cans, but also a brewmate, but also a Yeti. Like I don't. Oh, and shot glasses. Like, why do I need all this? Like, I, I went nuts. But it's fine. Whatever. It, when y'all see me out in public from head to toe in World Championship, we did. I love it. I love well, it. we are super excited for it. Are you going to go to the parade? I, I hope so. I'm still waiting to figure out. Some people are saying Friday. Some people are saying Saturday. If it's Friday... Maybe if it's Saturday, I can't because my cheerleading squad's in a competition that morning. So. Well, wait a second. I know I, I love it and I respect the hell out of it that you're ahead of the cheerleading team. But there's going to be another competition the next week. You got to wait 26 years maybe to get another <laughs> World Series championship parade. Let's go, girl. Probably. But, like, I missed the first part of the game last night for practice. I like it. I like kids. Yeah. For yeah. Uh, How old are these kids? Five and six. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. I would just leave them behind. If I were coaching Little League, I'd be like, beat it, kid. Go yeah, I don't know. I, I, oh, man. They were all you really are a better human me. than I am. They were really excited for me, so that was sweet. They that's all know sweet. I'm a huge Braves fan, so. Love I love that. I love that. Well, hey, congratulations. No, I'm not a cheerleader, dumbass. I'm a coach. <laughs> 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 anyways um that's great yeah i uh, the only this is one thing i really want to address that i haven't done yet that i think is very important for the braves to really like stop and think for a second and thank whatever it is you want to thank for what ronald acuna jr did in the 82 games he played for us because he he was only there for 82 games, and we were below 500 when he left. But it probably would have been a lot worse had he not done what he'd done. He uh -huh. had 24 home runs when he left. He'd racked up like 4.2 war. He was having an MVP season. I think he'd stolen like 17, 18 bases at that point. He he was the heart and soul and backbone and brains of this team. I, I know Freddie got hot after – Charlie, you know, told him to be good so he could meet Tatis. But Freddie struggled at the beginning of the year, too. Ronnie never really did. He really was, like, had he not been what he was for us, we would have been nowhere near 500. Uh -huh. Great so point. I was, it was really cool to see him there and celebrate last night. And Mike Soroka, I know he didn't throw a pitch this year because he's, like, the unluckiest kid in the whole world. But – He's done a lot of stuff for us in the last few years. And I saw some of the guys FaceTiming Charlie. Charlie couldn't travel with the team yesterday um, after right. his surgery. But I saw them FaceTiming him on the field and in the locker room. So that was really cool because we're not here without him either. 
So just the, the guys that went down and that aren't with us now, don't forget about what they did before they went down. And by the way, included in that group was the GM Alex Anthopoulos, who unfortunately yes. was down with COVID and yes. couldn't leave his house. So And none of this happens without AA. None right. of this. Right. Well, Ashlyn, we're really, really happy for you. Go Thank celebrate. You. Hopefully, you get to go to the parade. If I hope not, so. Fingers crossed. That's why you're a better human being than I am. If so. not, I've got somebody going that's going to FaceTime me. So, it'll be I like I'm there. It. It'll Good. be like I'm there. Love well, it. we are so happy for you. We love you. Go love you guys. Girl. See ya. Bye. All right, man. What do you got going on on John Boy? Not a damn thing, man. We, we did the episode last night um, in a drunken, excited state. Was it stupor? I don't know what the Stuper. word is. Stupor is a good word. So we did that. I don't got anything today. I do have to record a sequence. It'll come out tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm hurting, bro. I need I need some coffee right now. I got to play with my daughter. It's her off day. We're going to go maybe to the golf course and just putt around a little bit. Great. Good stuff. Great. Uh, I'm on, uh, is it called JJR? Is that what it's called? You're going on today? I am. I'm going on today, live at 1 o'clock Eastern at 10 a.m. Pacific. So... I think we're picking the the best in order, the last 20 champions. We're ranking them. Wow. Yeah. Hey, get ready. So, That's a long show. Well, it ain't going to be that long because I got a commitment within an hour. I said I got a, I got about 50 minutes to give you. Okay. So, yeah. But it'll be good. I think it'll be really good and a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that. But I'm going to get my fat ass on the elliptical right now. What's up? Tell the people what the schedule is. What are we going to do? Yeah. So a lot of people have been asking what's going on. Um, we are going to continue to do baseball today in the off season. It will not be five days a week. We're still trying to figure out more like two or three, probably three on the busy weeks, meaning like during awards week. Um, obviously, everything's going to get thrown into the blender come December 1st if there's a possible lockout. But we're going to be around. We're going to be talking about stuff. We are going to be here for you. We're going to be interacting and hopefully we're going to take this somewhere else other than Instagram so there can be continued interaction, but somewhere where we can put it up live as well. So we're just – a lot of stuff that's moving parts. And Rose Rotation continues in the off offseason. Uh, we'll cut that down to once per week. But we're still going to be your number one baseball destination for content. It's that simple. Talking Baseball is going to move to a Monday-Wednesday schedule. We'll probably be on something similar to that, whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or we just do two of those days. But we'll keep you guys informed. Yep. We'll be here. We will definitely be here. But we appreciate it. I mean, it, we took something that had no following back in, I think we started in April or maybe early May, and we love doing it every day. We love being able to talk this stuff. We love the, the back and forth with everybody in the chat. So it's as exciting for us as hopefully it is for you. And we love doing it. And don't forget about your dugout mugs. Code word John Boy, you get 30% off, plus brand new Braves championship gear. Let's roll. Let's get it. Ploofy, I bow down to you. You are <laughs> my prognosticating hero. You really are. My brothers and my nephew are on my text chain. They were like, tell Ploofy, did it up. Yes. Hey, it's been a pleasure doing this with you. I get to see. I love getting to see your face every morning. It's beautiful. You're a beautiful. No, that's average. Everyone is. Yeah. You guys are beautiful people. Enjoy your day. Nothing left. Nothing left this week, right? I think we're probably pretty good for the rest of this week. See you but I'll have to check with the bosses. But don't worry. We'll keep everyone posted. So don't go far without your device. You never know when Rose and Ploof are going to pop up in your life. That's the new saying. All right, everybody have an amazing day. We'll talk to you soon. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves, your 2021 World Series champions. Peace, everybody. See ya.